Hi guys, so this is week 5 of Inktober this year and we've got 3 days left of prompts that I'm going to run through first and then we can have more of a little chat about the whole month and everything that's going to go on after it. So let's get started. On day 29 the word was double. I hadn't done a purely monochromatic painting yet this month. I mean bar cruel, which I don't really know if you can count, but I really love doing different tones of blue, especially with these Kurotake watercolours. I just think the blues in that set are lovely, so you know, I just had to find an excuse. My idea was to create a twin set of girls looking at each other, and I really wanted them to show like the duality of self. So I was trying to reflect lots of different character and just ideas of character against one another. So there's light and dark, there's bubbly and serious, there's dawn and dusk and day and night, and being confident and shy, and yeah, I just, I don't want to run through every little idea, because I'd really hope that you guys as viewers would draw your own comparisons and have your own interpretation. <laughs> because they really are more based on feeling rather than trying to tell a definitive real world story these characters. And for that reason I wanted the background to reflect that feeling, so I just kind of kept with loose clouds and sun and star shapes just to give it more of an otherworldly feel. And yeah I was pretty happy with how they turned out too, but I do think this one's a bit creepy in some ways. I think it might just be those light blue eyes, I think they look a bit ghostly. So for day 30 the word was Joel. Oddly enough, I really liked this illustration when I drew it up and I kind of felt unsure if I could paint it again. Kind of like a few this month that I really enjoyed the drawing side of it and felt pretty confident in that stage. When it's come down to rendering it, I just get a bit worried. But I don't think I should have been really because I think this one ended up being one of my favourites from the month. I wanted to use dark green again because I do really like that colour and I didn't feel like I'd kind of reached its whole potential last time I used it. I was also a bit inspired by Emily here on YouTube, I'll link her channel somewhere on screen, and her paintings from earlier this year where she paints space and her astronaut character. I really wanted to play with that watercolour effect because I think it just looks like a lot of fun. And I tried it with the light outside of the window. I really like how the dark and light paints mix together with this technique and it really adds a bit of a glow effect on the night background. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I'd recommend it and I'd recommend her channel. It's just very inspiring. And I've realised that I've got a bit of a penchant for painting fur with this dash style here. Looking back through the last year of paintings or so that I've done, I've seen I've used it quite a few times, even back in Kitsune which is one of the first videos I did here, and I'm not really sure why, I, I think it's more of a natural way I'm approaching it by just wanting to add a bit of texture to the flat wash of the watercolours. I mean I think I'm going to try and take it a bit further in a future piece and maybe layer the dashes on top of each other, maybe bring in even more texture into the piece that way. But I think probably the best way of doing that would be with an acrylic or a gouache, something that has a bit of oil in it as well so that it can lift more off the page, unlike you know what a watercolour can achieve. Anyway, I'm going to talk about future plans more by the end of this video. So for the final day, 31, the word was slice. And I feel unsure how much to go into detail with this one. If you've been struggling through my videos for a while now, you'll know that I dislike being too descriptive when it comes to why I do certain things. I think I like to keep a bit of mystery and leave it open to your interpretation because I think that's one of the most fun things about art. I think people take real life to be very definitive and that this thing happened like this, a very black and white way of looking at stuff, and I don't think that's necessarily true. I think we all interpret events from our own perspective, and that's why when we share memories with other people, we don't all retell the exact same story, even if we were all there. And I think that's really the beauty of just having a unique human experience. And what I love about art is that you can bring that internal world that you have out to be seen, and yet it's still malleable, like a memory. It's open to interpretation, even if it's still portraying some type of truth. <laughs> and I'll stop being so introspective, but a lot of these feelings that I have towards that are within this piece. The world's sliced in two, there's nothingness and there's just everything. And the everything I wanted to have very fine details and washed and bright colours, but it's not definitively clear what it is. Is it a computer chip, is it a city plan, or is it just a load of geometrical shapes? And in her space is something that we can easily recognise. A girl on the periphery of two realities, one that's difficult and complicated and hard to understand, and one that's open and clear but really empty. And she's being guided by a phoenix, the bird that represents both life and death. <laughs> I said I wouldn't get too detailed, and then look what I start doing. 
Uh, funnily though, when I finished this, I kind of felt like I'd gone a bit too niche and I think no one would really like it. But when I listed the prints and originals over on Etsy, <laughs> shameless plug, I barely put this up before somebody bought it. And it's one of the few Inktober originals I've actually sold. And I'm a little sad in some ways that I don't get to know why that person liked it. I didn't really recognise the name, but I like to think that it meant something to them too. Something very unique to them. So anyway, I think I'm getting all sentimental because Inktober is over. And I haven't really talked about this much, but Inktober kind of feels like the bookends of this channel in some ways. I did start making videos before Inktober last year, but I only really met and began chatting to artists through Inktober. And again this year I've been able to meet some wonderful artists again. And I can't help but feel a little bit reflective of this last year that's gone, and of just the things I want to do on this channel in the future. So I just want to talk about that just for a few minutes. I'm not going to give you a week by week plan, because I kind of feel like being too prescriptive would be the death of my interest in continuing to make videos. I just like experimenting too much. But there are things that matter to me that I want to get back to and still have on this channel. The first one is the series Drawing Requests, as it was called, or Prompt Squad, as I'm going to call it now because I just love the cringe factor of that name. It just makes me smile saying it. One thing I value a lot when doing this channel is interacting with you guys and just coming together with new artists as well. It's what I love about Inktober and it's what I want to continue in some version here. I've been arguing with myself on how I want to get it restarted, stuff like getting the prompt list together and all that, and what I've decided is I'm going to take the lead for the first one. I think I'll make up the first prompt and announce it in a little video with a deadline for entries. And I want to give you guys at least a month to give this prompt a go, and then I'm going to collect them all together in one video at the end, and that way I can link to everyone's channels and Instagrams who've joined in, and I think that'll be a really nice way to keep us all connected going forward and hopefully help us all find new art channels that join in. Maybe also in that first video, if you have an idea for a future prompt, you could leave a comment underneath and then I can start creating a new list for the future of that project. And obviously I'll give credit to you as they come up over the months. And yeah, I hope that once we get it going, it's going to be a really nice way of keeping our little art community as close and just keep us all interacting as we do for Inktober. And next I want to kind of mention some future challenges that are on the horizon. In summer this year I took part in Childhood Week for the first time, as some of you may know, and the Winter Challenge is going to start up from December 1st to December 7th, so in a month's time. The challenge was created by the artist Beatrice Blue, and what you do is you follow a daily prompt list and just draw things that are inspired from your own childhood. I'm really looking forward to taking part and I hope you'll join me too. Links and information should all be on the page right now. There's also Folktale Week that I've just kind of learned about. It's going to run from the 12th to the 18th of November, so I know it's a bit short of notice. I'm going to hopefully take part in that too. There's a lot of talented artists that have come together to create it, and the prompts seem very nice and broad for interpretation, and they're kind of a nice rough guide for what you want to draw. The theme really is to retell folk tales that you know and enjoy, and yeah, I just think it's a really nice way to maybe learn a bit more about visual storytelling and creating characters. You know, both things that I really want to get better at, so if you're interested in that, again, link should be on the page and I hope you'll join me. And I'm just going to try and keep my ear to the ground for any more challenges like this that I think sound fun in the future, and I'll try and keep you guys posted here and on Instagram if you're interested, so you can join me along for the ride. <laughs> also, if you hear about one that sounds like a lot of fun, I'd love to hear about it, so make sure you send me a message. And now, just to end this year's Inktober, I want to talk a little bit about artists that I've enjoyed watching this month and that inspired me. It's been really hard to condense this list down. <laughs> to be honest, it's taken me a whole day, and it's really just because I want to feature them properly, as I think it's what they deserve, but also I really hope that you'll watch it and it'll be interesting to watch, so that you can hopefully find even just one artist that you really enjoy and you would like to go on and support yourself. So I'm going to leave it here and end on some music and this slideshow of sorts of different artists. Please support show them some love for working so hard this month, and every month let's be honest. And thank you for being so kind to me all month. I can't wait to get on to the next load of projects, and I'll see you all again soon.